Say thank you, Jesus. Sit down. As you are sitting, you are sitting in the heads of your enemies without an apology. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. The message from God to us today is titled, Righteousness is the key to life in Tana. Amen. Righteousness. The word righteousness means somebody who is living a life of Christ or someone who is living life for Christ. Amen. Okay. Uh, John 12, 44. We'll read to 50. Okay. Say, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Say, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him who sent me. Amen. Amen. If today, this, the secretary to the federal government of Nigeria happens to come to Sapele, he will be treated the way the president will be treated. If he is sent to represent the president, they will address him as his excellency represented. Amen. So Jesus said, anyone who believes in him does not believe in him, but believing in him who sent him. It means Jesus was sent to us. Amen. So, and anyone who believe also in me, do not believe in me, but believe in Christ who sent me. You are not clapping. <laughs> Amen. So, every word that I spoke here, it is not Omasan that is talking, but Jesus who sent me. It is messenger to a messenger to a messenger. Jesus was sent. And this work that I'm doing, I'm employed by Jesus to do it. Praise the Lord. He cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Please understand this. So wherever you see a pastor teaching, it is not the pastor that is teaching. It is Jesus that is teaching. And that's why when he was living, he said, I am not leaving you alone. I'm going to send you a comforter that will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, which is the Holy Spirit. Next. And he that sent me, see it him. That's Amen? Next. He said, I am come a light into the world. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not what? Abide in darkness. Now when we talk about this light, a lot of people just see it as Nepal light. Because that is what you are lacking in, in Africa. The darkness we are talking about is not this kind of physical light. We are talking about the light of God. Money can be seen as light. Good health can be seen as light. Children can be seen as light. Car can be seen as light. Anything good is light. So every good thing cometh from me, the Father. So Jesus did not come to become a burden to you. But 
not a light. Jesus did not come to be a curse to you, but a light. He didn't come to add to your problem, but to take all out. So he said he came as light. So in, in the sense that anyone who accepted Jesus is what? We have that light. He's safe. If you are in bondage, the moment you confess Jesus, he's for you. Then things will change instantly. If you believe, because some of you don't believe in Christ. I don't pay people to testify here. And I will never, never, ever. Praise the Lord. So I cannot destroy your idol and you are asking me to come and give you money. If you want to go back, it's your business. Mine is to teach you, not to force you. Jesus has never forced anybody to repent. Praise the Lord. If any man hear my word and believe not, I judge him not. Did he force anybody? I judge him not. For I came not to what? To judge the world, but to save the world. Have you seen it? He didn't come to be problem to anybody but to save you from problem. So you don't force anybody to repent. You can't. You don't. He that rejected me and received not my word had one that what? Judged him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Are you seeing it? So when we preach, you don't hear. The day of judgment, it is the same word that we teach, that we use in judging you. Hey, I don't know. They go bring my face. They come, they play my video for you. You go see me when I talk. You can say, hey, oh, lo, lo, lo. Hey, I don't know, say, they talk the written, oh, hey. You can't scratch your head if I had I know. I wish I know. There is no wish there. Straight. Next. He said, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment eh, what I should say. And what I should speak next. And I know that the, his commandment is what? Life everlasting. Whosoever I speak thereof, therefore, even as the Father would, so I speak. Now, three things that can destroy Christians. Every Christian in life must pass those three tests. Three tests. For you to be a Christian, these are the three tests you must pass. Jesus did that. Jesus passed his test. And Satan came to him after he has fasted uh, 40 days and 40 nights. He was tempted. What was he tempted of? The first one was food. You know why? Because at then he was hungry. And Satan know Jesus was hungry. He has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. So he has concluded in his heart the best thing to do, the best temptation is food. He came to Jesus and said, Command this stone to be made food. Did Jesus ask him for food? How can you just come to somebody? Eh, Alpha, how are you? I know you are a son of God. But for me to believe you, 
Command this stone to be made bread. Who won't eat the bread? He is trying to remind Jesus that you have the power to turn stone to bread. So just no need to go buy bread. So that Jesus go eat stone. See, stupid. He, know, he does not even think. But many of you are falling for the trick. Many people are falling. Christians, oh, they are falling for the trick. After fasting, temptation must come. They want to steal that power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your own, you are not Christ. A lot of Christians, the temptation I see them having, one is pride. 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 You see, you want to know a man, you test him with what? Second one is money. Some people here now, they are behaving well. They are very humble, very loyal. Let money come. You see pride. Movement will shake, will change. You see them. What's wrong with you? They want to try what rich men are doing. Pride. The other one is power. There are some people you will never know them that they are wicked until you give them leadership. Even in church. Even in church. When you give them leadership role, that is when you actually know them. It might be leadership role in their working place. They will just be wicked. They just made you manager and the first week you fire two people. You don't think, you don't consider. They made you head of a section in church. You fire everybody. You became rude, you are rude, you don't care. Some people, a man is a widower. He lost his wife. And you are married to come to the home to take care of the children. You begin to punish them. I pass through that. You begin to punish them. Serious punishment. You want to crumble them so your own can grow. <laughs> if you are here, you are doing such things, stop it. Because I tell you the end. Those ones you punish, you are training them. And they will grow and become better, stronger, and richer than those your own. The third one is what? Character. Character. There are a lot of tests. Many of you have failed today is because of your character. You are a woman. Only in Sapele, you have dated 400 men. How will you marry? And these 400 men are just in one year. 12 months. 400 men. Every street, you've dated a man. So who won't come to marriage? And the next thing, that our wife don't marry, you marry you. You know, go, go. Our wife. You must zip up. You must do what? You must zip up. You must zip up. I know in different churches they train us to 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 stay away from the children of the world. But something happened here in Luke 16. I love following what Jesus said. And I like doing what Jesus did. And it gives me joy. And it helps me spiritually. People will always advise you to stay away from the children of the world. If you stay away from them, how do you help them? Say, sure, you know, see, so we won't follow, make friend, and that shall 
Nada agbero. Nada this. Nada cocaine this. No. See, actually your friends can pollute you, but sometimes they don't define you. There's a part that says, show me your friend, I'll tell you who you are. It doesn't work to some persons. How many of you know that? It doesn't work to some persons. Some girls, their friends are doing prostitution, but you will never see them doing such thing. And when they are getting married, you will be surprised. These same spoiled people will come and do bridal training. But they are not like that. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at Luke 16 verse, verse 8. I read to 10. Jesus saying, talking here. It was a long story about a man, a master who gave, who gave goods, who lent money or goods to people. Different, different type of goods for them to go and sell and bring return. And something happened and Jesus was talking to his disciples about it in parable. But this is the end of it we are teaching about now. And the Lord commanded the unjust toward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children. Who are the children of light? Who are the children of this world? Huh? The unbelievers, the native doctors, the ritualists. These are the children of the world. We claim we are Christians. That if we are Christians, we are children of light. What is Jesus now saying about them and us? He said they are wiser. And it's true. You see one idiot. Let me use the word. We just come out online and we start saying church is calm. And you are believing them. Attacking pastors. And you are believing them. Calling our great generals of the world. Fake. You, have you ever did video praising God? Talking about what pastors are doing. No. But you look at your mirror. You see them do like this. What is your bum bum? Does your bum bum have a high? Even the ones that does not have bum bum. Ah, I don't understand. You see some. Ah, I hate dog. They will start. They have Instagram. They have, there's one now. TikTok. Different things. TikTok challenge. Head war. People are heading war. I'm getting my grip. Everything is a challenge. No money in the challenge, you. They will do it. They brought a challenge. Who to climb crate? Crate. Somebody died. Satan has won one person. Not you know, and the crate is beer crate. Beer. Beer crate. Beer. Just to climb it, too. They will climb. And they will not fall. The target of Satan now, see the trick. Who he wants to kill, he has turned him. But he need this challenge to kill him. Then this, that one now will not come. I will do it. One crate will fall out. Hey, hey, he will hit the crate. Boom. He's dead. And when one died, challenge don't end. Fear will not come. But Satan has taken one. Be careful. They are wiser. The children of darkness. How do they brainwash you to serve that idol? Come to think of it. You have vow. You can't do juju. You, you, you hate it. But you find yourself at the end of the day. It's pouring Fanta. What they call juju now is plastic dumbbell. How do they call it? Dolly. That they are. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? But I, sometimes I, I can't really fountain how people believe in all this nonsense. 
You pay 200 and something thousand just to fetch water for river. Native chalk and Fanta. And toy that children play with. You are not buying down. Mommy water. Hallelujah. Give me money. Stupid. Nonsense. Amen. Please, there are things we don't do. Don't destroy your future and your destiny. Satan don't love you. He can never bless you. Ask yourself, why is it that rituals will make money? But after some time, they will pay a price. Why are they paying that price? Have you seen Jesus bless somebody and kill the person? Even when Jesus tried to call some people young, you see them dying happily. Praise the Lord. Let me see that scripture again, please. And look at what Jesus is saying here again. He said, I say unto you, make to yourself friends of them. What? Of what? Jesus says you should make friends with them. Take it off. Making friends with them not to do what they are doing so that when you are down, you can use some of their wisdom to help yourself. In the sense is learn their wisdom. But in churches, I know they have taught us to stay away from them. Staying away from them, that's why we are not doing business. Staying away from them, that's why they are the richest people in the world. Staying away from them, that is why we are not playing politics. Stay away! Stay away! And they are politicians. Stay away! How can you be a pastor and you are playing politics? Stay away! And that is why they are ruling us. Stay away! That's why they can get up and said nobody goes to church because of coronavirus. Stay away! If the governor of Delta State is a pastor before he become governor and all his commissioners are pastors, will corona close church? If the president is a pastor and all his ministers are Christians, will corona close church? Stay away! They keep telling us, stay away. They keep telling us, stay away. I don't want to see you with that girl. Look at her. She's very short skirt. And you, you wear trousers. Nobody say you wear short skirts like the girl. Stay away! And you make friends with her. Stay away. So, if you stay away, from distance, you still keep admiring her. One day you go. When they frustrate you here, the day they give you slap, pam, you run to her. He said, let your light shine. In where? So that they will do what? And glorify who? If you use your light to rob that person that is in darkness, he said, when light appear, what happened? You will be the one that will consume him, not him that consumes you. Except you turn yourself to Geisha or something. That's when you'll be consumed. Don't stay away. Don't stay away. Play politics. Play politics. You are the one voting for them. But they are the one deciding for you. Can you imagine? When they became governor and president, they choose the life you must live. Police will lock you. You are begging people for help. It is that your one vote that you don't value that give them the power. Don't stay away. Push your children to go and play politics. Don't! It's not a dirty game. The same time will come. Politics is a dirty game. Politics is not for Christians. It is not Christians that are saying it. It is them who brought that word from the pit of hell. To pollute the mind of Christians because they are wiser. What does Jesus, what does the Bible say about politics? What does God say about rulership? God said in his world, when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. 
But when the unrighteous rule, the people will mourn. They will complain. They will suffer. So why are you allowing them to rule? That's why you can't pay school fees. That's why cement is 4,000. That's why rice is 50,000. That's why kerosene has scarce. That's why petrol is expensive. That's why everything is expensive. Because you let them rule. You let them. You let them. You let them. Not until the day you will decide to play this game. What is in it? A woman in this church was made counselor because she want to be. Don't sit down and just let them go. No! How did they play politics? Just start. I want to contest. Oh, I'm supporting John. Anywhere John is going, I'm going with him. That is it. Amen. Don't let them have their way. You are also who? Christ's descendant. So you play politics. Get, go, if you don't have it, go and have your voter's card. Go and have it. Election day, even if it's raining, come out! Say, I bet they go ring that. Nobody can ring election again. You know, fit. Now, they have made mistake. God have made them to make a costly mistake by signing into law something that they can never ring again. So now, every vote we count. Come out now and vote. Vote for your choice. The reason is what? Christians are running away from politics. Christians have run away from politics. If you hear say pastor and a politician, the diverse, that politician pastor church now they go, they are the one talking, mark them. They are the one talking, mark them. They are using them to raise voices. And when you ask the person, okay, what's it wrong for pastor to play politics? He go quiet. Show me in the scripture. Pastor Tunde Bakari, tomorrow is still contesting. Even the vice president now is a pastor. Tinibu wife, she's a senator. She's a pastor. A redeem. There is nothing wrong for you to play politics. Who told you? Do you know politicians are deciding our destiny? Do you know that? They are the ones deciding our destinies. They can choose to say nobody come out of his house for one month. You dare not try it. Have they not done it during Corona? Sit at home. Were you not scared to come out? You are allowing people to decide for you. Please fight for your right. Stand for your right. Put politics in the heart of your children when they are coming up. Put it. Put it. Don't say I beg and they go vote. And if you go to any polling unit, you collect money and vote. You have sold your destiny. You have sold the destiny of your children. Don't ever collect money from anybody. If you left your house with the mind of voting for join, and you get to the polling unit, Matt, you gave you money. Take it. Vote for that same John. Don't sell your conscience. Don't. Praise the Lord. Be on your feet. So please, it is not a sin to be a politician. Amen? Let's open our mouth and begin to appreciate God. Appreciate him for his word. Appreciate him for his word. Appreciate him for his word. Tell him, Lord, make me an overcomer in the time of my trials. Because trials will surely come. Make me an overcomer. 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 When it is time for my test, Lord, help me to pass. Strengthen my desires for you, Lord. Strengthen my determination for you. 
Show your strength, Lord, in my weakness. Show your strength in my weakness, Lord. 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 Show your strength in my weakness. 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 Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, show your strength in my weakness. Strengthen your determination for me. Strengthen your desires in me. Show your strength in my weakness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.